What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married to Medicine Season 9, Episode 10. So this episode begins with Cecil and Dr. Simone. So they've invited Toya and Eugene, Quad, Audra, and Dennis over to their home to talk about their book. I guess they want to collect stories or experiences of being in a relationship, of relationships succeeding, relationships failing, I guess, to include in their book. But whenever they have these uh, dinners or whatever to discuss their book. They're not taking any notes. They're not doing like, there's no like voice recordings. It's like, how are you just going to run back the tape, the married to medicine tapes and see what everybody said and put that in your book? Because I'm beginning to think that y'all obviously are just creating a scene. We know that. And this book is probably already written or it's got nothing to do with what these couples are saying because they're not acting like they're very serious on gathering the information from their friends to include in this so-called book. As soon as Toya sees Audra, Audra, who is the newest, um, person on Married to Medicine, who's married to Dennis, who is a dentist, I think. Um, as soon as Toya sees Audra, she has to say something about what she's wearing because Audra came to the dinner in jeans and a t-shirt and not, not a t-shirt, a jeans and a cute top. It was a cute top. Audra to me looked really good. She looked fresh. She looked young. Um, it's just dinner at Dr. Simone's house. It wasn't like at a five-star restaurant. And um, Toya had to say something about how casual she was dressed. And I'm thinking to myself, Toya, why do you care? Why do you care about what another person's wearing to another person's house? This isn't your house. This isn't your dinner. You're not in control of the dress code. So why do you care? She could have come there in a clown suit for all she, wow, what's, what's it to you, Toy? Is it going to make your food taste any better or any worse because of what Audra is wearing? Let her be casual. Let her be comfortable. Damn, Toya. So Simone and Cecil, of course, they want advice for their damn book. And um, Audra starts, so they're talking about relationships, right? They're talking about relationships. And then for whatever reason, I don't know how Audra, Audra to me, she seems like she is really intent on making sure that she secures a spot on this damn show because she's acting erratic to me. Um, this dinner was to talk about couples and relationships and she brings up her issues with Toya. So she addresses the things that Toya had said about her not being a very good lawyer and the things that so Toya had said about her fashion and, um, Toya actually stands by what she says. She says, well, because we were in Las Vegas, we were going out, everybody was dressed really nice and you showed up in a jogging suit, in a champion jogging suit in Las Vegas. And um, Toya thought that she was really underdressed. Once again, Toya, why do you care? What does her, what is how she dresses have to do with you and what you got going on? I don't understand. I hate it when adults are very concerned about how other adults do their hair, how other adults dress, how uh, the kind of cars that other adults are driving, the things that other adults are doing out of their own free will and they're not hurting anyone. Why do you care? Because if anybody were to say anything about you, because they do call you Tacky Toya, and so there's something about you is tacky. So if someone says something about you, Toya, you'd get, you know, butt hurt and offended and want to lash back. So let this woman dress however Wherever the hell she wants to dress. So Toya says, um, no, excuse me. Um, Quad says in her confessional that Toya's self-esteem is wrapped around material things and labels, but she's still tacky Toya. Exactly. Thank you, Quad. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very obvious that she puts a lot of weight on material things because she's got nothing else going on because she cannot beat anybody else at this table or on this show with intelligence, with education, with um, wealth. She can't beat anybody else in those departments. So she feels like she's going to go back and revert to her teenage years and start making fun of how people dress. So they talk about alpha women because Quad says she is an alpha woman and what is it that she can do to still maintain her alpha woman status but without taking masculinity away from her partner. And Eugene says that, you know, I guess he considers Toya. Now, just because you're loud and, and boisterous and bossy, I don't necessarily think that makes you an, being the loudest in the room doesn't make you an alpha woman. 
Okay, because you can boss your, your, your husband around doesn't make you an alpha woman. An alpha woman is a woman who can lead and who can lead to success. That's an alpha woman to me, okay? It could be the quietest woman in the room. But if you can lead and you know how to lead and you can lead to success, that shows to me that you're an alpha woman. But whatever. So Eugene thinks he's under the impression, he's under the illusion that he's married to an alpha woman because his wife is extremely loud. And he says that um, he chose a woman like that. You know, he chose a woman who was... I don't know, ready to fight or something, because he said that um, he likes how she can put people in their place, I guess, but he just doesn't like it when she tries to do that to him. But when he sees her doing that to other people, you know, he's um, front row and center with his popcorn watching his woman, you know, trying to bash other people or do whatever with other people, which he considers to be an alpha woman. But as long as she doesn't, she doesn't exude those type of things on him. Then Eugene, yeah, Eugene, then Eugene apologizes to Toya and he says, you know, I really wasn't the best partner um, in 2020 because, you know, with the whole COVID thing and him working in an emergency room and dealing with the patients and the C-19 and people dying all around him, it really took a toll on him and it spilled into his marriage. So I feel like, I don't even know if, I, anyway, so he apologized to Toya and um, Toya was like, we're good. That's all she said. Yeah, we're good. So I feel like she, I, I don't know if she was understanding or not understanding or if she was complaining to him. Like, you know, what's wrong. If I was married to a doctor and he was doing emergency, he worked in the, um, he was doing emergency medicine and he was like completely overworked, stressed out, trying to save people's lives. I would be so understanding. I wouldn't even be complaining about it. I wouldn't be like, oh, my husband's pulling away and my husband's emotionally unavailable. I would understand why he is the way he is. If I really knew my man and that he was really a good man, you know, um, he's just going through something right now because, you know, this is, this is crazy. This is something that we have never seen in our lifetime before. We've never had to deal with something like this. And just imagine how stressful it was for the average person who's not a doctor who doesn't work in medicine. You know, how stressful it was with your job, with your kids and schools and, you know, offices closing and people losing their jobs because, you know, restaurants are shutting down and all this other stuff going on. Um, I just, can you imagine what it's like for a doctor who is dealing with life and death in this capacity? I mean, emergency room doctors deal with it anyway, but this was like tenfold. And I would be so understanding. I would be like, this is not who he really is. If he's kind of like being distant with me, he is just trying to cope with what he's going through at work. This is not who he really is. That's how I would see it. But I don't know what Tori was doing to the point, I don't know what she was doing to make Eugene want to apologize to her at this moment. Moving on, Quad. So Quad is planning her Christmas slash housewarming party at her new house. And um, so in her confessionals, I've noticed in this episode, Quad was throwing major digs at Toya. Like every time she, and every time that she was in a confessional, she was saying something about Quad. And, I mean, saying something about Toya. And so, um, like for example, uh, when she was planning her party, she was with her party planner and they were talking about, you know, decorations or whatever else. And Quad was telling her party planner, you know, she was like, you know, we're not going to do that because I don't want to, you know, waste money. And in her confessional, Quad says that I'm not about that wasteful spending and she compares compares it to the, the camels that Toya had bought for her party, you know, uh, insinuating that, you know, Toya is all about wasting money. Moving on to Anila. So Anila gets on her mom for the, Anila gets on her mom, right? Because her mom is not a great house, housekeeper or, uh, yeah, housekeeper. So Anila is like, you know, her mom isn't following any of the damn rules. Her mom isn't picking up after the damn kids. And I'm like, Anila, you're getting mad at your mom for the things that you yourself are not doing. You know, you should be grateful that your mom is able to help you with something. And maybe you can lead by example instead of yelling at your mom about not putting lids on things maybe you should try to like help your mom and then maybe your mom would be more inclined to you know clean up better but if I were you and you're like you've got the coin you've got the money get you a damn maid girl you can get you three maids okay with the kind of money that you can get three you can get a maid for every room of the house just get you a damn maid and leave your mom alone your mom is dealing with enough with these children so Anila says that she really regrets her parents moving in. Toya, 
She's getting ready for Quad's party and she shows Eugene that she got Quad a t-shirt that says diva and every letter of the word diva has a, a, an explanation or something. So the D stands for divorce, the I stands for intelligent, the V stands for vivacious and the A stands for awesome. And I felt like Toya got that shirt kind of like a as a dig to quad because quad is divorced. I think that's the main reason why she got that shirt, but because it had also a lot of positive things on it, she thought that she can get away with it being like a positive gift. But I think that she was more concerned with the word divorce. She was more focused on the word divorce because in her confessional, she was like, well, she is divorced. And that's what she kind of focused on. I don't think she got that shirt out of love. I think she got that shirt because she's trying to, you know, uh, take a dig at quad for being a divorced woman. So we're at quads party uh, we see Carrie again and let me tell you something when I watch Dr. Heavenly's YouTube channel um, I think I watched one particular video where Carrie was us was uh, Dr. Heavenly's guest host or something and Dr. Heavenly and Carrie um, are like friends I guess in real life and I have to say that I enjoyed watching Carrie on Dr. Heavenly's show you know she was okay I, she kind of grew on me a little bit so now when I see Carrie I see her from a different light and I can tolerate her so Toya gives Quad the t-shirt and Quad thought the t-shirt was nice she said thank you she liked it. And in her confessional, Quad said that all of the things on the shirt, every single last one of them, including the divorce part, are things that Toya wishes she could be. <laughs> so then Anila came with a woman named Zaina, which is Anila's friend. And Dr. Heavily schools us and says that Zaina uh, was actually a very close friend to Toya, but they had some kind of a falling out. I think, Dr. so then Dr. Heavily tells, because there was some, so Dr. Heavily was concerned that some mess was going to go down at this party because Zaina and Toya have really bad blood. And Anila brought this woman there almost kind of like, I don't know, hoping that something would get popped off or something. I don't know um, that maybe Anila had some hidden intentions or a hidden agenda of why she brought Zaina there. So um, Toya, Toya tells Anila, uh, of course, she's got something to say about what people are wearing. So she has something to say about what Anila was wearing. And she says she looked like a figure skate. Um, she, had on, she had on a figure skate, a figure skates uh, outfit on. <sighs> Who cares? So, if, so what if she did, Toya? What's your point? What do you want the woman to do? You, do you want her to go change into something else? Do you want her to put on her ice skates and perform for you? What is the point of saying that? Like you have nothing. Anyways, moving on. So then Toya says in her confessional that rhinestones went out in the 80s. Once again, you know, throwing shade at Anila's outfit. To me, I thought Anila looked fine. Dr. Heavily tells Jackie that Anila brought Zayna to the party. And she tells Jackie that Zayna is the one that said Toya has slept with someone in their neighborhood. So Zaina has started spreading this rumor about Toya. So then um, Quad gives a speech and she gives a speech and her speech talks about how she survived divorce and life is so much better after her divorce. And, you know, she's that girl. She's got all these accomplishments. She's done this, this and that. And I felt like the men in the audience, you know, like the husbands were kind of like, OK, where is this going? Actually, like maybe they kind of didn't want quad to talk about how wonderful life was after divorce because maybe they'll give their wives some ideas but even the women kind of didn't care for her speech because it seemed like quad was bragging on herself bragging about herself um and dr simone said in her confessional that you know if you've got it going on like that you know we can see it you don't have to explain it um we can definitely see it so all the guys get together with uh, the newbie, Dennis, and they talk about how he's about to get married, which confused me because I thought Dennis and Audra were already legally married. They got married at the church house because of COVID. They couldn't have a big extravagant wedding. But now that the whole C-19 thing has died down a little bit, they were going to have this big extravagant wedding. So when they were like, well, you know, trying to give them advice about, oh, you know, you're about to get married and marriage is like this and marriage is like that. I'm like, he's already married so then after that quad is with all the women and she introduces her childhood friend and as she's introducing her childhood friend toya rudely interrupts quad and so quad was like girl just shut up for a second you know let me talk and so then audra this is when things got really bizarre and this is what i what i mean when i say that audra was acting very erratic 
Audra, first of all, she had on a dress, so she was dressed appropriately. I'm pretty sure Toya would have found something uh, to say about the dress, even though it was appropriate for the occasion. And I'm wondering if Audra got up in the middle of the floor just to show off the fact that she was, you know, had on a dress. I don't know. Uh, but she was acting very erratic. So she gets up out of nowhere in the middle of the room um, and she tells um, everybody that... Um, so she wants to address Toya again. And um, Audra says that Toya is always concerned about everything. I don't know what she meant by that. I guess she's in everybody's business. And Audra says that Toya had been telling everyone that she sold her home for a million dollars or that she made a profit of a million dollars on her home. And Toya says, I never said that. Well, Bravo um, shows the flashback of Toya saying exactly that, that she and Eugene had made a million dollars off of the sale of their home. So then Audra gives this lesson on real estate and talks about, cause she's a real estate attorney. So she has her calculator. She, this woman has, so she takes out the cat, she, you know, pulls up the calculator on her phone and then she starts crunching all these numbers to show that after the sale of the home and after everybody got their commission and after they paid off their seven liens that Toya and Eugene were actually in the negative and that they did not make a profit off of their home. And after Audra did all of that grandstanding, everybody was like, okay, so what do you want us to do with this information? Dr. Simone even got up and acted like she was about to uh, leave, but she didn't. And so Audra was like, well, you know, she told somebody next to her, she said, you know, I think Dr. Simone got mad that I called her friend out. No, maybe Dr. Simone got mad because you're acting like a lunatic. You know, maybe she's wanted to leave because you're acting kind of crazy right now. She doesn't know what's about to pop off. So then Anila gets into it with um, Toya's friend, Carmitha. I don't exactly know what was said. I think, I don't know what was said, but it was one of those situations where, you know, Latoya, I mean, Latoya, Toya was like, I'm not talking to you. And then um, Anila was like, well, I'm not talking to you. And then I don't know how Carmitha got into it, but Carmitha got it. And Carmitha was, you know, bout about it. Carmitha acted like, you know, that the name Carmitha, I don't want to get into it with anybody named Carmitha because that sounds like someone who uh, grew up on the right side of the tracks and knows how to use her hands. You know what I'm saying? So Carmitha got up and she was like ready to rumble and roll with Anila. You know, Anila ain't about that life. So Carmitha like got up and she's like, you know, what's up? You know, what's going on? And so they had to get Carmitha to calm the hell down. And then Toya gets into it with both Anila and Zaina. I forgot what that was all about, but they both got into it. So while they're going back and forth, Dr. Heavenly whispers in Toya's ear that um, it may come out at this party that um, you were sleeping around with someone in your neighborhood. And so Toya was like, well, who said that? And I guess, you know, Dr. Heavenly pointed to Anila and Zaina. And then Toya said that she wants to know who said that? So she looks at them and she's like, who the hell said that I slept with somebody in my neighborhood? And that's where the episode ended. Um, Dr. Heavenly. Why? Why? Dr. Heavenly really was, Dr. Heavenly was really, and, and I actually like Dr. Heavenly. When this, when Dr. Heavenly first came on the scene, I didn't care for her, but I actually, you know, after watching her on YouTube, you know, I began to like Dr. Heavenly because she's funny and she's entertaining. Um, for her to tell Toya that, hey, that it's going to come out, it might come out at this party. First of all, it's going to come out at this party because you brought it out, Dr. Heavenly, and you are so, and, and I, you know, you are so focused on getting the heat off of you and your YouTube channel that you're going to start this mess here with Toya and Anila and Zaina or whatever. The, something like that, I feel like would have probably come up on its own because Zaina has now been introduced to us. So I feel like that was going to eventually come up. I don't think Dr. Heavenly had to open up, you know, that can of worms, but she did. And obviously Dr. Heavenly just wants to be messy, messy as hell. And um, let's talk about whether or not we believe Toya slept with somebody in her neighborhood. I don't know if Toya did or if she didn't, but it, Toya seems like the kind of person 
who, if she did, I wouldn't be surprised. That's the kind of person that she she seems like because she talks about how unsatisfied she is with Dr. Eugene. And so if she did, if that was true, I would not be one of those people that would say, oh, no way, not Toya, because Toya seems like she would. Toya seems that um, careless that she probably would have flirted or slept with or has something going on with somebody in the neighborhood. Um, I can see Toya doing that. I really can. I really, truly can. Because I don't think that Toya has a lot of respect for Eugene. And I feel bad for Eugene because Eugene is working himself to death for Toya, not for his kids, because his, t- his kids don't need, um, I don't know, 20, 30,000 square foot homes. His kids don't need that. He's doing all of this for Toya so that Toya can show out to everybody else because Toya has nothing else going for her. She can't even like brag about her marriage or her man. You know, that's not even enough for her. She wants people to know that she's got the biggest and the best and the greatest and the newest of things. Just the fact that your husband is a black man in America who is a doctor who works hard for his family, that's not enough for you, Toya. I can definitely see Toya messing around with someone who might have certain assets that Eugene does not possess or that she wants us to believe that he doesn't possess. If you get what I mean, that she probably, if someone, if a good looking man with a nice body and certain attributes wanted to get down with Toya and flirt with Toya, I see Toya falling for the bait. I do see Toya doing that. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying that she did. All I'm saying is that if it came out that she actually did, I wouldn't be one of those people to try to be like, oh, no, she didn't. No, you wouldn't hear those words from me. That is my review. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. On your way out, please do not forget to rate the video. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel and I will definitely talk to you later.